Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk Live. I am your host for the evening, Tasha Dillon. If you will, take a moment, say good evening, say hello, share, click share, and let somebody know that we're on because this is going to be a good one tonight. All right. I have some wonderful guests on board, and we are kicking off February like we do every year with Love and Relationships. And tonight is about what men want. So I just want to take a moment and let you guys say hello to our guest for the evening. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. How hello. are you all doing? Great, great, great. Good. Marvel. It's so good to have you. So good to have you. Hey, Rick. Hey, Brother Rick Wells. Uh, it's so good to see your walk in the Lord. Thank you for joining us this evening and being a part with us. We are here to talk about what men want talk about love and relationships. Hello, Miss Edith, glad you joined us. We're glad to see you come in and be a part of this broadcast as well. All right, we see you, Lady Latoria, La uh, Latori Gibson, uh, Mimi. Mimi did a whole full makeup tutorial for us. We appreciate you coming and joining us tonight as well. To Miss Ramsey, thank you for being here. For everyone who's coming in, and joining us thank you guys for doing so say good evening let me see you tell me where you're coming from and make sure you click share like and click share because this is going to be a good one and a real one you know it's real talk for a real walk well gentlemen right before we get started i want to open up with a word of prayer so would one of you one of you indulge us and give us a word of prayer and we're going to jump right into the evening not all at once just <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Danye, would you I do us know. honors? <laughs> okay, no problem. Let us pray. Father, we just thank you for the evening, God. We just thank you for those that are gathered in this sacred place, God. We call thank you. Father, just ask these now that God will have ears to hear what the Lord is saying to the God. I pray you anoint our, on our tongues. Of prayer. And Father, I pray that as real as we can be, and edifying and can be and Jesus might get at the same it is so man. Amen. That magnificent name. Yes indeed. Yes, so. yes. Dr. Luckett, thank you for being here. Pastor Landrews, thank you for joining us. We appreciate you guys. We see you all coming in and being a part. So what we want to do, gentlemen, is uh have this talk every year we come around this time of the year and you know some throughout the year, but people are, are always interested in love and relationships. Uh, and this is what I say is that we were born to relate. We are born to be with other people and we can't work around that. And basically what we do and why we do what we do in life is usually at the end of the day, 
about the relationships that we have. And so I want you each to kind of tell who you are on this evening and let everybody know what perspective you'll be coming from in talking with us. Okay. Well, I am Mark Grove. Uh, I'm a senior of a different world church here in Jackson and Meridian, Mississippi. I'm also a high practitioner. I'm a father of beautiful children, girls, and uh, I'm a of almost 10. And uh, I'm, so I'll be speaking from a perspective. All right, from a married perspective, okay. Reverend Wesley, would you introduce yourself, please, sir? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm sorry. Yes. I'm Minister Wesley Preston, and I'm uh, an associate minister at New Life Church uh, here in Decatur, Georgia, uh, outside of Atlanta. Uh, I am a um, counselor there. I'm a, the leader of the counseling ministry uh, at New Life Church. And uh, so I bring a perspective from uh, the counseling uh, aspect of it. And I also uh, bring the aspect of the um, as a as a father. And so I'm single. I'm a father and I'm a counselor. And so I'll be speaking from that perspective. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. And certainly last last, but certainly not least. Would you introduce yourself for us, Brother Mike? All right, my name. Is, uh, <laughs> I'm afraid to be funny. <laughs> my name is uh, Bishop Dr. Michael Lewis. I was just trying to be funny because of the fact that everybody else that he passed. <laughs> what? I'm just Bishop Dr. Michael Lewis. I'm just playing. My name is Brother Michael Lewis, and uh, I'm a I'm married, and uh, I have uh, five children now. I'm a uh, newlywed, and uh, Come from perspective of being married, and you know, before I was married, looking, you know, just being single, and uh, just trying to help the body of people, help the body of people to get married, get together, be in love forever. And uh, I'm a truck driver, and uh, that's my life. I love it. He said, "Help the people be in love and get married." That's all right. That is so good. So we have married, we have newly um, wed, and we have single. We have fathers. Who are here with us and all different professions and backgrounds professional counselor pastor and a man of god so this is good uh you guys a couple of you guys are not new to it but and uh the audience some are watching and so we're so glad to have for the first time dr hargrove with us uh on this particular talk so i want to um, ask you guys we had i had so many questions and we're going to for sure do a what women want segment as well. So, you know, fellas, we're going to talk about the things that women want. But tonight we want to take this moment and talk about what do men want. So as men, you all are, are um, men who love women, who appreciate and respect women. Talk to me. Somebody start this conversation off about what's special about the woman. Tell, tell us what is special <coughs> about the woman. Well, I'll start off. Um, <laughs> that, that that is such a broad topic, you know. What's special about the woman? Uh, the the woman, uh, when you look at it from a biblical perspective, uh, is the rib of the husband, mm. and she was placed in the man's life to complete that man. It doesn't mean he's not a man without a wife, but there's something about the scriptures, you know, when, 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 you know, God created the heavens, he created the earth, he created everything above and beneath the, the earth. And he even created Adam. And at each step, you know, he said it was good. And then when he got to Adam, right, he created Adam. And then he said about Adam, he said, it is not good for man to be alone. In other words, God knew uh, how he had designed, shaped, and fashioned Adam because God is his creator. He created Adam, uh, Imago Dei, in his image. And so there's something about us and the way we were created uh, 
that God knew that without the wife, without the woman, we would be men, but we would never be uh, the men that he had called us to be. In other words, uh, I, we would never reach our fullest potential without her. And so when a man gets married, uh, he, he, he may be a great man and he's a successful man and he may do a lot of things. And, and of course, Michael is, is new, uh, newly wed here. But Michael being newly married, okay, was a great man before he got married. But now that he's connected with his rib, his wife, okay, Michael is going to be able to serve God on an even much greater level because he has someone uh, that God has created uh, for him, that he, has fashioned for him. He has found favor through his wife. Yes. Yes. Gentlemen, Absolutely. Yes. What, what do you, uh, you gentlemen want to add to that? That, that was good. Absolutely. I, go ahead, man of God. I yield. Oh, go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go, go ahead, man of God. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um, I would say, um, as the man of God was saying earlier, uh, companionship, I do believe that the woman definitely complements the man. Um, I definitely believe that there is a, that a woman is, and number one, she's amazing. Because for someone mm. to take eat and bear it nine months and then push you out a baby, that is magnificent in and of itself. So a woman is a life giver. And that's why I definitely believe in companionship, in partnership, in relationship. Um, the deal is, as we think about this holistically, that when God did create Adam and Eve, neither one of them had a belly button. You know, that means they were fully matured. You know, there was no need for Adam to come out of a woman because the Bible highlights that man did not come from woman, but a woman came from man. And I definitely believe another uh, special aspect of a woman, and I yield the floor, is that she's able, the right woman, the right wife, is able to deal with your issues. The man of God also highlighted how the wife or the woman is the rib of a man. The rib cage covers the heart. The Bible says out of the heart flows the issues of life. So whoever God assigns to you or and who he designed for you is able to handle whatever issues you may have. Oh, that's good. And and right before you come, Michael, you, you said something key there, too, is that she would be designed to handle his issues. You know, for so long, I had to even break through this mindset that the church taught that we need to be issue free or get over all of your things before God would match you with someone. And the reality is every point of life, you're gonna have something going on. And I had to, you know, I minister to women now, who you are and where you are, God didn't say he wouldn't let a man love you there. We all want to be better, but no one is gonna be perfect and without faults and failures. All right, Brother Michael. Well, uh, that was good. Everything they said was good. I love it because it really describes the biblical way about a woman and what a woman is. And I really love everything y'all said. And the main thing I, I pulled from, I listened to y'all and I pulled from that. And, but you said, what do women, what do we, what's so special about a woman? I pulled from what is special about the woman that God designed for you. Because when God designed that woman for you, that woman is for you. And like you said, like Dr. Hargrove said, like Brother Dr. Wesley said, it's just the fact of, uh, you know, dealing with women, they are our real. They are to add to us. They are to help us. They are to go through with us. They are to understand us. And it just, that comes along with everything with that woman being in your life. You know, to deal, to go through your problem, go through your situations, you understand your ups and downs. Understand when you need to be talked to. Understand when you need to be loved. Understand when you need to be listened to. And, you know, I think all of everything we have said tonight, that designs and revolves around about a woman because when that woman, when the right woman added to you, your life can't do nothing but go to the next level in life. Come on. Yes, thank you. Okay, so uh, we already know, and, and I agree because it's true. When God made the woman, he looked at her and he said, you know what? I'm done. 
because it can't get any better. <laughs> so, so we are the crown of creation. <laughs> so thank you all for recognizing that. <laughs> um, so when we get into life, you know, we've all had our backgrounds and backdrops to relating relationships and um, we've done some, some good, we've done some bad, we've been rotten with some and we've been sweet with some. So um, uh, Sister Sandra said that, that was great, thank you all. She said, thank you for those words, Brother Michael. So I want to just ask some things that women have asked and if you all have questions tonight, make sure you chime in because we don't have a long time with these gentlemen but we're going to get in and ask these questions. And, um, and so I'm going to um, put this out here and let's talk about with dating, dating or courtship. And I know dating and courtship are two different things and we probably need to do a whole segment on that. But I want to know um, what is a good way for a Christian woman to approach dating. And not only that, but as she approaches the dating perspective, um, is it okay for a woman to make the first move? And if it is okay, what's too much or what's too little? Or maybe, maybe I should just say what's too much. So tell me about dating and we're talking grown women. So I need you all, cause a lot of times I've, I found when I talk to people within Christendom, we automatically default to the teenagers and we start talking to them about, you know, that walk, but talk to the, talk to the grown people. <laughs> Talk to the ones who have been around the mulberry bush a few times here yeah. and let us know when it comes to dating, courting, um, what does that look like in Christendom? And just a side note, is it okay for a woman to make the first move or to approach a man? So let me let you guys take it away for a minute. All right, I'll start. So uh, that's a good question. It's a great question. Uh, and it's a question that uh, uh, women uh, are divided on. Uh, some women believe that, you know, when it comes to the, the idea of meeting uh, men, that uh, women should uh, always be passive. Women should always be reserved. Uh, women should, um, should never uh, show interest in a man. And, and they often pull the scripture that says, you know, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, ladies, it's the man's job to find you, yes. right? And your job is to wait on him to do it. And and they pulled that scripture. And so, uh, but oftentimes I think we take it out of, out of context um, because what I find interesting is that when it comes to career, everybody says, you know, ladies, don't sit on the sideline when it comes to your career. You've got to put yourself in a position to get the promotion. When it comes to your education, don't sit on the sidelines, you know, and, and wait to, you know, uh, to get a good job. You know, go to school and be proactive and, and go out and get that job, you know, that you that you want, that you that you deserve. And so every aspect of life, uh, women are taught to to position themselves for success. But when it comes to relationships, we teach just the opposite. You know, no, sit back, don't say. And so the question then becomes, okay, you know, uh, what's the difference between a woman uh, 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 positioning herself, okay, uh, such as was, uh, was done uh, with uh, uh, Ruth and Boaz, what's the difference between her positioning herself for a relationship and the woman chasing after the man okay so i don't think it's proper or appropriate for women to chase behind men okay because men are natural we're natural naturally we're hunters uh men who are interested in a woman if he's truly interested in her uh he's gonna go after her unless there's something about her that tells him hold up stop you know don't come this way but we are natural hunters. We go after what we want. So uh, if a woman is positioning herself and the man is not making any move, then either he doesn't want her or God hasn't spoke to him about her at that moment. Doesn't mean he won't, but it, at that moment, he hasn't spoken to her. And so uh, what I believe is that is that women should always position themselves. If you want to be married, 
position yourself uh, for marriage. And so when when you leave home, uh, you know, I, I have a friend of mine. She's, she's a very beautiful girl. She's single. And she tells me all the time, she says, Wesley, men never speak to me. She says, men never flirt with me. You know, she's like, she says, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm invisible. Right. And so I watch this friend. I know her. And she has this look on her face at all times, Michael, that says, don't come near me. Don't touch me. I mean, now now in her heart, she's a sweetheart. That's not what the way she is. However, uh, she she oftentimes carries herself as though she's guarded, you know, and so men pick up on that the fact that she's guarded, you know, and so we don't like having our heads cut off. So uh, I say to women, you know, position yourself uh, 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 like your wife, as though you are available. And um, and so men will then respond in kind. So that's my spill on it. OK, well, that was good. And and, you know, I. I... I heard something that you said, women don't chase men down. And I absolutely agree with that. I, and I'm going to tell you the truth, though. I have seen some women say, that's my husband, and she will wear him down <laughs> and end up marrying that man. <laughs> and they live happy lives. Yes. But go ahead and chime in, gentlemen, <laughs> chime in. And I see uh, Edith asks, how does one position herself? So we will try to uh, get that. I'm glad to see my mom on, Minister Althea. I saw Dr. Valerie Bass Russell with us, Sister Lisa Nobles. We see you. We see you, Tracy Kirsch. Thank you all for joining us tonight. All right. So let me make way for you gentlemen to chime in on that. All right. So I guess we'll pick up on the from the dating perspective on it. I think uh, when we look at it from a dating perspective, we got to put it in context that we are in the 20th and there are many different dating. Everybody... Uh, dating like they did in the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, or the 90s. There's social media and all these other things uh, that makes, I would say, getting to know something a whole lot easier. But here's the thing, because one thing I've noticed is we're dealing with a generation who does not know how to communicate. And the way they yeah. communicate is through text. So when you mm -hmm. try to go on a date and you're wondering why there's nobody or really has the right to question to ask is because I have to be face to face with you. All right. Yeah. So I think uh, knowing how to properly communicate your feelings, your thoughts, your ideals, having a different perspective on communication in and of itself would definitely kind of move maneuver you throughout a date. Um, second, the second question I believe is uh, was should a woman pursue a man? Okay. Uh, I believe this. It's nothing wrong with someone showing interest or a woman showing interest in the man or expressing mm -hmm. interest in the man. I don't believe a woman is designed to chase, right? And so I definitely see that there's no, and of course, they uh, get in your DMs and they express interest all the time. But I believe that there got to be a place where once you express interest, you got to give room for response. And mm -hmm. so, uh, you know, I believe knowing who you are has a lot to do. Um, the, my, my, my brother, who uh, the man of God who spoke before me, kind of highlighted something so uh, significant because the question we should pose, am I the type of person I would want to date? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the type of person. Because let me be honest, I'm big on hygiene and all those type of things, dressing the whole night. So let's say you may dress nice, but I seen you on a bad day. You catch what I'm saying? So, you know, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. <laughs> That's it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? So I'm saying that yeah. from the from the perspective of and 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 then having a friendly aura about yourself. I mean, my God, you you wanna I look at it like this. If you look at me, you're gonna attract something mean, right? Mm -hmm. So what if what you are attracting mm -hmm. is with how you presenting yourself and how you're looking. So I hope, you know, that helps. And I yield the floor again, you guys. That was good. That was good. And I see some questions coming in. Dr. Russell has sent a question. We will, we will talk about this in a minute. And to Michael, I, as you respond, so I'm seeing women want to know, you all are saying there is, it is okay for a woman to say I'm available or I'm interested. What does that look like? 
what i mean does she walk up and say hey how you doing i just saw you wanted to say hello to you be nice to hear from you sometime or does she give an invitation you know what's too much you know they, you know i mean she can't chase you because you're the hunters and we're we're not uh we're the flower but we don't want you to pick us and, and pluck us from our roots either and and let us dry up but so what's too much what's what what does that look like michael uh well, you know I'm gonna be real now. So I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna come from this perspective. Perspective. Uh, I remember when I was when I used to go out and hang out in the club. That was my thing. I went to. I I, I used to like to chill. And so yeah. my thing was, I never did like approaching women because, like uh, uh, Reverend West said, like his friend lady. You know, sometimes they're not approachable because the way they look. So I always waited for the invite for a woman to let me know whether she want to dance. So it's just like, even like now when you dating, you know, the way a woman speak to you, you know that the invite is there. Mm. So, but what I say about women, if, if you invite a man, they'll still keep your qualities about yourself and your standards about yourself and don't let your guard down too soon. So, so Stay. wait a minute. Let, <clears throat> tell me when you say you would wait for the invite, was it in the blinking yeah. of the eye? Was it in a smile? Or did she just say, come over here? Or what, what's the invite? What's the invite? And don't y'all be out in no club looking for no Michaels, okay? He's, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, just, he's telling what he I'm used to do. <laughs> So what what is what is that what is that invite? The invite sometimes it's just a smile, sometimes it's a look that I that she do want you to be invited. So it's just like uh, you have to pay attention, and most times you get that man attention that way if you just you know if you just be yourself. And I say like for the dating when you come to dating, you know be yourself, be who you are. Don't give that man nothing fake. Just be who you are. If you if you funny. If you love him, just, just show who you are and you don't have to put on no front because believe me, if that man wants you, if that's who for you, it ain't no stopping. So it's just like, you know, you just taking the chain, but like I said, you keep your qualities there. And, you know, I want to add this in because I was talking to my daughter the other day. I hope she doesn't mind me talking about this, but we was having a conversation about dating, about young people dating. And... I pray that the older people get it together because now the young folks don't have nothing to look up to because we just like them. And they Amen. So it's like, we not set no example of dating. So it's like, when she was telling me how they date now, I'm like, what type of, how do you date like that? How do you just don't give no standards about what you're looking for or keep the standards about yourself so you can make that man work for what he wants? You get what I'm saying? So you're not giving if 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 we're not giving a person the 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 the, uh, the challenge to get to them, then hey, what you gonna have? You're just like you just you just being friends. You're not looking for nothing to come in, you know, into your life that's gonna be worth worth right or quality. Right, that's good. So I'm going I want to Pastor Russell said, why do men, the hunters, always chase a Rachel? when God has sent you a Leah. That's a good one right there. While you all just think on that for a quick little second, a few comments. We see you, Julius Thomas. He said, women have to be at and go to the field. Once in the field, do what you do, he'll notice. We hear you, we hear you, Brother Thomas. All right. And uh, Dr. Luckett said, there are so many aggressive women who, who send DMs shoot shots and chase it makes things challenging for those of us who don't or won't and i agree with that i absolutely agree that that does happen uh minister janice brown said they don't date these days they just they just talk that's true that's we that's just true. friends um and i'm like you know even they, if they sleep together we just we just hang out you know just this is crazy to me it's like weird that's not true don't give people an excuse and women don't let men off easy if he gets some sugar from you don't you sit there and act like that kiss didn't mean something to you you need to be honest all right oh let me see so my brother my brother is on from houston texas he said men are natural hunters but not all are good hunters. Come on, big brother. He says they will sometimes go for the woman that is not hiding 
so deep in the woods. Sometimes mm. women want to be found, but they hide deep in the woods and hunters find Rachel that was at the edge of the forest. <laughs> I need a good That's hunter. Good. Thank you for that, big brother. That was good. Okay, so what what you all have to say to Dr. Russell? Any any feedback on that? You want you want Rachel, and God sent you a Leah. Who? Uh, oh, we can't hear you, Dr. Danye. We can't hear you. <laughs> Still can't hear. Can't, can't hear nobody there. You couldn't hear me. So you can hear me now. Okay, so it's the two of us now. <laughs> it's down to just the two of us. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> let's see. Okay, Wesley's coming back. Let's see. Guys, thank you. This is technology. This is where we are. This is where we are. Okay, we have Wesley back. Can you hear us, Wesley? Wesley, you with us? Okay, so while he's figuring that out, I think he's working on his sound. Either said... Why do men play the bait and switch game? Mm. They, oh, this is a good one. They be all attentive when dating, but once the relationship is established, then they switch up on you. So why, why is that mm. done? <laughs> Everybody back on, I can't hear nobody. <laughs> uh, I can't hear nobody, man. Hello? I can't hear nobody. <laughs> All right, can anybody hear me? I can hear you now. Okay. So Hargrove and, and, and Presley, can you guys hear me? The wonders of technology. This is going too good. So, Michael, I'm, I'm going to let you kind of address that, and I'm going to let these gentlemen hop off for a minute. So talk about us. Talk to, and I mean, truly, men do the switch and bait. Nice, want to get in, they get in, and then they switch up on you. Talk about why men do that and how to deal with the men who do that. Uh, mainly because sometimes when a man switch up, it's because he found he saw something that he didn't want no more, or either uh, it's something that you did or something that you said, or it may he just be figured out that hey, I, I don't want this no more. So sometimes that's where the switch may come at, or either somebody else got his attention. So you have to really kind of play it by ear and go by discernment in a way of feeling how you feel and what your gut feeling telling you. Because most time that's what it is. Most time men just don't switch up for nothing. I was think I was telling my wife about the other day when we was talking. You know, it's only there's only a couple of reasons why men switch up. You know, they switch up because of no reason. So oh. uh it's something that it's something that he it's something that caught his attention that he didn't like, or either somebody else got his attention. And most time he ain't got to he ain't got to know you in a certain way and he like, well, uh, I don't think I want this. So that wow. was a switch game. So wow. It's it just like if a woman, if you notice something that you don't like about that man, you're going to start pulling back in a certain way. You're not going to receive his call. You're not going to avoid his texts. So it's like it's something that you saw about that man that you didn't like. So that's why you pull back. So it's the same identical reason. It's something that man saw the reason why he pulled back. I see somebody is saying or the hunt is over. Now that's, that's good. Um, so, so a woman she can let it go too fast, right? And that will make yes. that man lose interest. Rick Wells says, ladies, don't let the relationship be the goal. Let building within your faith and relationship together with God be the goal. Your walk with God is never an ending goal. Okay. All right. 
Um, so you guys want to add anything to that? That switch and bait, he's all in, all sweet, a sweetie pie, honey bunch. And then what happens too quickly to make a man lose interest? What happens when, what, what does a woman do too quickly? Ooh, I know give yeah. up the nookie and let him crumble the cookie. I get that. We know that. Anything else? Yeah. <laughs> I think over, hear me? Mm-hmm. Okay, I think uh, overbearing and not giving space for that man to miss the thought of you or the ideal of you. Um, Y'all know I, I'm a counselor by nature, but hear this, because um, I got to address that Leah and Rachel deal. She, the woman of God said uh, why she picked, uh, who was it, Rachel over Leah. When we, I, when we exegete that text now, y'all, we got to also consider the culture and the customs of that time that it wasn't proper to marry the younger before the older, the elder. So we got to make sure we put that in context. I believe, now y'all hear me, y'all just work with me. God is not going to allow me to marry something I'm not attracted to. So let me, let me put the preachers aside because here's the thing. It's going to be difficult to, to sleep with something that don't, that don't make you rise up. It don't make you take a stand. The truth of the matter, okay? And so that's why I say we have to position ourselves to be attractive. You know? Okay, and y'all, I hope y'all hear me. I was quiet for a little while, but now I'm talking. <laughs> so I think the deal when we just talk about talk you know, about it. Uh, uh, uh who was it? Isaac, I believe Abraham got Isaac. Isaac didn't know he was getting uh Leah. He wasn't trying to get Leah. You know, that wasn't who he wanted. He wanted Rachel. Rachel was bad. And this is what gets you now because in their customs, he didn't know the culture, which teaches us a lesson. You better know what kind of culture you dating. You better know what kind of culture this woman coming from or this man coming from so you won't get caught slipping. That's all I'm saying. So I, I rest my case. But, you know, yeah, I rest my case, y'all. Anybody want to chime in? That was good. That was good. They, <laughs> said, that, they that, said they hear you, too. That is so true. And that's, that's what I would definitely. I'm glad you said it that way, because like you said, if you're not a I, I haven't heard this so many times. Uh, she wasn't my type. Uh, She's not good, but I'm still with her. Okay, so down down the road, what you gonna get out the wild is not gonna be nothing for you. You gonna just be with this person. So then, hey, what do you have? You don't have nothing. So you want some appealing to you? Something I, I think God send you what you really like, what you're attracted to, what you really love, because He knows that hey, you in it for the long haul, not for the short haul. If you in it, if you, you know you. So He knows that you got this. Got to last forever. Not just for that moment. I got that. It has to last forever. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. So somebody said, everybody ain't purdy. That's how they said it, purdy. There are some good women who are not so cute. So can you be attractive, but not necessarily purdy? Let me say this. Speak to it. Personality is attractive. Attitude is attractive. You on your grind is attractive. See, the problem is, I know some girls, uh, 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 they got this new term, uh, 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 they call them plus size. And baby, they work what they got, but they got a personality that they sell it, that when you see them, you're like, man, I normally wouldn't, but I got to holler because of the simple fact she got a personality. I'm going to tell you, as I get older, and this is no lie, uh, I thank God for my wife. My wife is amazing. I'm going to tell you what stimulates me now. It's not just physical features. What stimulates me now is a person who understands that intimacy is not just from a, from a physical dimension. It's intellectual. It's mental. It's spiritual. And I think that we got to learn how to stimulate individuals, not just from a physical perspective. Am I making sense? So if you ain't got Regardless, you may not be the 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 the, the, the coke bottle. That's fine. 
You better use, you better get in shape whatever kind of body you are and make that work for you. You may not have the back and all of that. That's fine. You got to learn how to make what you got, but you may got the eyes and you know how to battle. Just like we talk about men having mouthpiece, women got to have a mouthpiece. Baby, let me tell you something. You, If you dress yourself up, put your makeup on, do whatever you do, when you when that man see you and you know how to talk to him, that's the most sexiest thing in the world. When a woman knows how to talk to a man, you make him feel like, my God, like he, the t he on top of the world. That's what a man want to marry. And I rest my case. I'm trying to marry somebody. My God, let me stop. I don't know stop. <laughs> that's good. Don't that's, stop, Doc. Don't stop. Especially when he said, that's what a man wants to marry. Be yeah. and, and let me tell you, women are learning where I am as a woman, and, and, and you guys have been with me through this journey, and you've heard me say that before. I have learned how to use my words effectively in boy-girl relating, because that's something I didn't do very well. So I had to grow in that area. You know, I was pastor, preacher, teacher, Reverend Dylan, but I wasn't Tasha. And I had to figure all of that out. And a lot of us are professional. And I, I have no doubt had I stayed in banking, I would have been the same kind, probably even more demanding of a personality. And God had to break that out of me. So it is a gift to use your words to, uh, to build and not tear down. So that, that, is such a, that is such a key point, such a key point. All right. So uh, you guys want to chime in and then we're going to move on to the next real quick uh, as time is moving fast. Okay. Yeah, and it's just like I, I, I just thought about it. I just uh, thought when you said something about banking, you remember the movie Daddy's Little Girl? Y'all remember that movie? Tyler Perry. You remember when when Gabriel was dating the guy, and she she just thought beneath would call what her friends thought, but didn't know that was the man for her. But Come see, on, you you don't know what she done to that man to push him to that area, to push him to that place. See. That's what people get mixed up at. You could a woman could be powerful. You could be have the toppest job in the world, but you can't worry about what your friend gonna say. What they think you should have. You know, you thought you should have a man in a suit and a tie, oh, because he make the six figure. Hey, but at the end of the day, is that man gonna treat you right? Is he gonna love you right? Is he gonna respect you? Is he gonna take care of you like you should? Because it's all that plays in field, and that's what I, I hope people didn't get the. the the, you know, the wrong intention about saying is what you like or what intention, I mean, what you're attracted to. Cause it's a lot more than just making a physical attraction. It's everything. It's like he's like Dr. Howard, it's personality, it's everything. It's all way around. So, hey, I just, that when you say that, that would make me think about that, you know, because you don't know what you'll do to that man. You don't know. Reverend Wesley? Anything to add? Are you muted again? He is he muted again. <laughs> Let's see. What did you do earlier to get the sound on? I wonder I wonder if you're on the right browser when you came in. You might want to check the browser and see. And can you ring us back? Because we, we need to hear what you're saying. You are such a phenomenal guest. Oh, wait, wait. You're on now. Say something. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't know what happened, but anyway, yeah. I just, I was just saying, I echo everything uh, those two gentlemen said. Agree wholeheartedly with them. So nothing else to add. So all right. So let's move on to another topic. So you meet the one, and it didn't work. Whatever, however, the breakup was for whatever reason it was for let's talk about the breakup how should men handle the breakup and i like to help you know some brothers with this sometimes as well and uh let's see here okay so let me introduce it with this thought right here here we go would you step on your ex for a million dollars this is how we go out feeling <laughs> That's normally how we feel about it. <laughs> so what are some things you guys can say to your brothers so that the women don't feel like that when they break off a relationship? How should a relationship be ended? How should it be? Even if it's not happening, 
what should happen when a man says, I'm moving on. Because I have just seen so many women, let me say this, I have seen so many women who lack closure and it puts them in emotional turmoil because the man refused to take a moment to say, we're not moving on, but I want to just, I want to look at you and value you enough to say why or to say goodbye. And a lot of women are not getting that and it's crushing the hearts of women. I'm telling you, that's a real issue. So what should a breakup look like? Talk about that. Let me bring the three of you guys up. And Brother Mike, I think you're going to have to move over when I bring this screen up. I'm going to put you guys up together. All right, Dr. Dillon. <laughs> so, I think one of the, uh, there are a couple of things. Uh, first of all, uh, we have to uh, talk about the things that we don't want to talk about. And right. the thing that we really hate to talk about is ending. Uh, Dr. Henry Cloud wrote a book uh, entitled Necessary Endings. And he talks about in that book uh, how uh, how to end relationships and how to know uh, when is the time to end the relationship. Uh, what I found uh, um, in many cases, uh, men will let the young lady know what his intentions are, which is to not move on. And oftentimes, um, women will ignore the words that are coming out of his mouth or his actions. Because some, some men are, will communicate to you that they're ready to move on. Some men won't communicate it verbally, but they will treat her as though they're ready to move on. And so sometimes uh, we as men send mixed signals. So I've seen situations where the man is telling the woman he's ready to move on, but on Friday nights when he That's gets good. bored, you know, and, you know, he wants to Netflix and chill with somebody, then he'll call her up, right? Now, she has a choice. She can look at the fact that he hadn't spoken to her in two weeks since he said he wanted to move on, and she can take that for what it is, or she can latch on to the fact that, oh, he called me to come Netflix and chill. He must want to be with me. And, 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 and he's told her what he wanted, right? And so oftentimes, you know, women will hang on uh, and they'll hang on too long. And what happens is when you do that, uh, you, you're no closer to getting that man back. You're actually uh, pushing him further away because now he realizes that, hey, She's going to always be here hanging on. I can always get her later. So he's going to go ahead and do what he's doing. And so oftentimes, uh, you know, we're looking for closure and we want closure and we should get closure. But we have to be honest with ourselves. We won't always get the closure that we're looking for. And so when you don't get the closure you're looking for, uh, what you have to do is say, OK, God, it's just me and you. So you have to reckon with yourself and learn how to move on sometimes without getting the closure. Because if you hinge your emotional health on getting closure, closure from that other person, what happens to your emotional health when they don't give that to you? You see what I'm saying? So then you, you, you're stuck. And that's when uh, you, you get the, you know, people saying, you know, oh, my goodness, she's crazy, you know. Uh, uh, you know, he doesn't want her and she just, you know, hanging on, you know, what, what's wrong with her, you know? And so he's told her, Hey, this is what I'm, you know, I want to do. I want to move on. That's I'm not really in good. Yeah. Take that, for what it, take that for what it is. Most men are not that difficult. We we're really a lot simpler than women, right? We pretty much will show you, you know, what, what it is we want. Now, some men don't communicate as well as others. So they may not explain it, you know, in detail, in words like I'm using. But if he's not a communicator and he doesn't explain it in words and detail, he'll definitely show her. And so what I say to women is uh, don't just listen to what comes out of our mouth. Right. Watch our actions. 
because there should be harmony. You know, the Bible says, you know, a double minded man is unstable in all his ways. Double minded simply means he says one thing and he does another. Right. Or he says one thing today and something else tomorrow. And so, um, you know, watch our actions and listen to what we say and what we do. And you should see harmony there. That is so good. That is so good. Uh, you gentlemen want to chime in. And, and is, it, is, is it true, the thought that I hear, um, the men don't care what the woman is saying. He's just more into what she's doing. So she can say, no, 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 don't call me anymore. But it's, if he calls and she says, come on over, that's all he really is concerned about. But um, is that true or not? Not what I mean, she says, can, but what she does. Can be. I was, I, okay. Old saying was actions speak louder than words, you know. Um, but we're looking at it, and um, help me, you're talking about breakup, right? So I think the thing about 21st century, and I have to go into that because I'm a little old school, but when you think about breakup, everybody knows about it. It's on Facebook. It's on Instagram. I mean, and I think the proper way to break up is to have a meeting, a mutual meeting where you let that individual know that, hey, I have enough honor for you to let you know that I don't see us having a future together. Now, most people ain't going to hear this. And the reason you don't want to hear this because you may have crossed lines too early. So now you will feel that that individual got what he want there's a soul tie created and now you're like oh man the woman have a tendency to think you know what is it that i did wrong i've given him what i thought he wanted right and because i gave him that now i feel used and like the man of god stated earlier i believe you got to learn how to live with the why some of your questions like why will never be answered and you got to be okay with that. If we go throughout the Bible, there are a lot of questions that went unanswered. You know, why, why, why did, you know, Naomi had to lose her husband? We don't know. But I'm sure she asked God why. So I think, you know, as it relates to this conversation and breakup, there got to be a mutual agreement that, hey, and, you know, it depends on the type of individual you're dealing with. But there got to be a level of respect and honor from the start of the relationship that allows that hey we're gonna come we may we're gonna we're gonna dis, we're gonna agree to disagree and this is what we're gonna do I'm gonna wish you well and you're gonna wish me well hopefully and we're gonna go our separate rate separate ways and my goal if I was dating in this in this day and age I would never want to date someone who's not honorable so I'm not the type that's gonna get off of if I break up with you or you break up with me I ain't going telling stuff you told me in confidentiality that's not my character so i think it's a character issue it's an issue of integrity also a matter of integrity uh if you're going to do that do it integral with integrity and honesty right and that's good character. that's good and uh brother michael you want to chime in and right before you do uh reverend press uh preston you mentioned a book what was that book that you mentioned earlier it's called necessary endings by Dr. Henry Cloud. Okay, can somebody type that in? Necessary Endings by Dr. Henry Cloud. Yes. All right. Brother Michael, you want to chime in on that? And I have one more question. Uh, I think they said it all. Uh, you know, <clears throat> you know, being respectful with how you break up, you know, and I think that's the main reason of being respectful and getting a personal reason because like you said, if you don't, they'll be stuck in that position and you don't want them stuck. You want them to move on and be happy in life. And uh, and I think right. that's the best thing to do to end it on a professional level and on a good level so everybody can move on and be and be good. Right, because I'm telling you, the way things are today, if you don't give that woman understanding, uh, mm -hmm. let me tell you, you're going to have some trouble on your hands. <laughs> so it's better to say, I tried to talk to her than to say, I don't know why. You know why she's cutting up. You know why. Talk to that woman. And it may, it's harder, it's hard, it's a hard conversation, but trust me, it is harder to deal with the, um, what's the word? I'm, I'm missing the word, but when a woman gets angry, it's, it's, it's gone. So you want to deal with it on the front end. Um, thank you, uh, Olga, Olga Bell put it in there. That's the name of that book. 
if you want to get that book. Thank you guys for, for putting that in. All right, so here's, here's a uh, question, and then we're going to do the quick fire. The evening has gone too fast. So in the U.S., let me, let me preface it with saying this. In the U.S., the biggest use, and this is a question about what is intimacy to men, because as a parent, it's not sex. Sex won't get a man to marry you, and those kind of things. So um, in the U.S., the biggest use of prostitutes is on the day Social Security checks come out. According to John Morley, medical doctor, director of uh, geriatric medicine at St. Louis University. So that tells us sex is important, you know, and, and we would just assume that, oh, thank you, Sister Alicia Dillon. Uh, Alicia Dillon, she said, a, a woman scorned. That's the word right there. You don't want to deal with a woman scorned, right? Um, so sex is important to men. We understand that. But it's not always sex that wins the man. So you all tell women, what, what is a man looking for when he is looking for intimacy with a woman? What is intimacy? Uh -huh. Well, I say uh, intimacy is about conversation. Uh, being in depth with a person sometimes, the conversation that go back and forth, uh, to understand what that person is talking about. Uh, intimacy is the life, their lifestyle, the lifestyle they live, the lifestyle that they walk. Uh, are they really who they are? And uh, to me, that's that's intimacy. You know, knowing that person outside of their job, outside of the, you know, uh, church, outside of that person. You know, just being in conversation with that person, to me. The conversation that is, you know, means more than anything. How do you connect with one another? That could be more intimacy than anything. And so, you know, sometimes even with you know, just, you know, loving on one, one another without sex, just loving them on each other. That's intimacy to me. Yes, I, I think intimacy. Thank you, Michael. But I, I think intimacy um, is something that's not universal uh, from man to man to man. And what I mean by that is intimacy uh, is sort of like love languages. Um, what one, the, the way a woman is intimate with her husband, woman A is intimate with her husband, uh, may look different uh, when woman wife B is intimate with her husband. Because I believe that intimacy is when the woman uh, or the wife is able to link up or tie into uh, the thing that makes him click, right? And so there, there, and, and, and because men are, are not a monolith, we're different. There are different things that make different men click, okay? But there's one overarching theme uh, that every woman who is in a marriage or a relationship that's fulfilling, or at least one that our man thinks is fulfilling, there's one thing that you'll see a common th thread that runs through all of those relationships, and that is her feminine energy. That is her feminine energy. Um, so oftentimes, I, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's unfortunate in our culture uh, that, that, that women sometimes run away from or move away from their feminine energy. You know, um, sometimes they're trying to be, you know, uh, be the man at being the man, right? And God's never called her to beat me at being me. He's never called me to beat her at be, being her, right? And so there's a masculine energy I bring. There's a feminine energy she brings. And, and, and so I think women have to continue to tap into that, right? And understand that when you're operating in your feminine energy, it doesn't make you less than a man, right? Uh, as a matter of fact, that's, that makes you greater in a sense because what you're bringing to that relationship, he can't get anywhere else. There's nowhere else he can get that except from the lady he's in a relationship with. And so intimacy is when she uses her feminine energy to tap into the specific things that move him. And in most cases, uh, uh, sex is uh, sort of the icing on the cake when it comes to intimacy. It's not the cake, right? It's the icing on the cake. 
the cake is, you know, when she uh, uses her energy, feminine energy to tie into uh, who he is as a man and to uplift him because men, we want to be one of our greatest needs is to be respected by the woman. You know, there's a, a, a study done one time with men and they asked husbands, they says, uh, if you could only pick one, which would you pick? Your wife saying that she loves you or your wife saying that she respects you. And overwhelmingly, men chose respect over love. <laughs> you know, and so, and so the, the intimacy is when she's able to tap into that and and show her man uh, she respects him and lift him up in the areas that he needs to be lifted up. The specific that is good. Area. Oh, that is so good. Oh my goodness, this is this is oh this is good 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 tonight. Uh, Dr. Hargrove, you want to chime in? Prophetess Sabina, we see you. She said exactly. She said I would stay in my lane, be a woman, and be feminine. Amen to that. I love my womanness. Okay. Oh, I, I make it intimacy. Intimacy. I would say it would be inter me, inter me. When we have the opportunity uh, to enter the thoughts, the ideas, the opinions of that individual that is our significant other. And I think another thing is, and let me let me speak from a not a biblical perspective, but intimacy, there I believe there, there are levels, there are different dimensions to it. Like it's not just one dimensional. And, you know, the man of God was talking about, you know, the love language, you know, according to Gary Chapman, there are five love languages. But what I'm realizing, even as I grow older, that there's a tendency that our love language has a, there's a possibility that it will evolve. So it can change in one season. It may have been affirmation, but in the next season, they say a woman's sex drive gets better when she gets older. Uh, so it may be physical touch for us. So amen, think, amen, amen. <laughs> so I think we are <laughs> where we never master our our significant other because we are evolving with them. So I never master my wife. She's not a video game. If you catch what I'm saying, but I believe what is happening in just the church in general. Um, we don't know how to be spontaneous anymore. Like, you know, I, I don't know if y'all have seen this, but I don't want you to lose your ability to be a freak because you got faith. <laughs> y'all, I'm sorry. Am I too, am I, am I, if I'm too much, y'all just pray for me. Okay. Uh, I'm married though. <laughs> speak on preacher, speak on. I just, I just wanted to throw it out there because here's the problem. You were doing Joe Blow had an amazing time with you, and Sister Susie had amazing time with you. You got, I, I put the ring on your finger. You, you know, and, and you had like, you know, you treat me like we, like my God, like we the Waltons or something. I don't know, you know, we're not Amish, you know. I just think we got to make sure, you know, we keep that alive. Okay, how long you been married? Mix that thing up, you know what I mean? How you gonna catch, how you gonna bake me with lingerie and then start winning? I don't get that, but y'all, I'm going to tell you the truth, okay? I'm not going to give you the church answer. Don't lose your freak because you got faith, okay? I'm just going gonna, gonna to help some of y'all catch it. I want a husband, but we need to make sure, baby, be in the gym even after the baby's all that, okay? Stop letting these folks fool you with these books talking about, uh, you know, growth. No, I'm not. I told my wife, listen, you're going to be my girlfriend when we 80, okay? You're going to act like my girlfriend. What I, want, what I would have done with a girlfriend at the age of 80, I'm going to do it with you at the age of 80. Okay, that's how we gonna roll. We are gonna be in Miami in the penthouse chilling. That's what we gonna. That's what we retiring in. We ain't retiring in on Mississippi to get off. Uh uh-uh. uh, and die. No, the devil's alive. I in know Miami. that's right. That, uh, that is so good. Minister Janice said, "Nerp." She said, "She's and she spelled it nerp." She said, "When you get them papers, let the freak flag fly." That's Amen. the preacher. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, uh, this is, um, oh, Sister Lisa Weems, she said, tell it. She said, because if you want one, uh, she, oh, I, I, okay, I can't really read that one, Sister Lisa. I, let me see. Okay. <laughs> but they say, say it. <laughs> but this is so true, though. This is so true. We have to keep it real and, and, um, and enjoy the process. Enjoy the, the conversation. 
enjoy the, the intimate times, enjoy the sexual times, enjoy uh, getting to know each other time, just enjoy the fullness of the relationship. And that's the way it should be. All right, let me make a couple of announcements and I'm going to ask you guys to give us a piece of advice as we get ready to uh, leave out tonight. But before that, I do have a quick fire round of questions that I wanna ask. And you all bear with me for just one moment. These are some very important announcements and I did say that we had one very important one to make this evening. So let me just make a, a few announcements and we'll be right back with these gentlemen, okay? So um, next week or the next, yes, next week, we're gonna have part two of this particular session. So I'm looking forward to it. And we're gonna have uh, these gentlemen with us. So make sure you tune in next week for Minister um, Kendall Lumpkins and Brother Gerald McGee and Pastor Chad Williams. So that's gonna be a wonderful conversation. Now look, these are the guests that we have coming up uh, across the next week. Uh, next month rather. So all these you're going to see in some way or another here uh, with Let's Talk Live. So make sure that you uh, get ready to stay in tune and be a part of that. Thank you guys for supporting Contact 3DC, which is Three Dimension Consultant. I appreciate it. Keep in mind all of the wonderful things that are going on. You can come back and view all of these announcements. But uh, let me say this to you. This is my, my chime in. I say, you know, whatever you've been through, don't just let life happen to you. Readjust and stay adjusted. How about that? And one final, final <coughs> announcement is uh, you're looking at um, right now the, the Beverly's. And this is so important. I need you guys to tune in to this. And I'm going to ask you to make an action on tonight once you hear this information. And I want to thank, um, uh, first, I want to thank uh, Kathy Clark, Lady Kathy Clark out of Hattiesburg, Mississippi for being on the front line of so many social issues, political issues, and she's very active. And so she, she brought this to my attention and this has just kind of gripped my heart. And the picture that you're seeing, indulge me for just a minute because if it were you, trust me, you would want somebody to talk about this. This is husband and wife Mars and Takia Beverly, natives of Hattiesburg and Port Gibson, Mississippi. They currently reside in Vicksburg, Mississippi. They were both charged with the death of their child and stepchild, baby Jariah Smith. On Friday, February 29th, just a couple of days ago, Takia, by all evidence recorded, she was wrongly convicted of murder. Okay, and I'm telling you, I have read some of the evidence and, and it just, it's, it's just gripping. And she was, by all accounts, wrongly convicted. Her and her family and friends are advocating on her behalf to bring her back home to her husband and children. And yes, he was charged as well, but they are wanting to seek justice for baby Jariah because it has not been served. There are some interesting developments around this over the last days. And activist Lady Kathy Clark, she will be with us on Let's Talk Live soon for more explanation and an update. She's actually getting with those who were behind the scenes to find out the updates that need to be uh, learned and she's going to in come back and inform us about that. So I'm asking you guys, if you have not, make sure that you go on the Facebook page. There is a Facebook page and get on that page and stand with Kia, I stand with Kia. That is the name of the page. So you wanna make sure that you take a minute, get on that page on Facebook, like that page, and stay abreast of that. And we're gonna have Lady Clark, she's gonna come and talk to us about that. So we appreciate uh, everybody who's doing their part. We can all do our part and it helps out, all right? So gentlemen, as we get ready to go, let me give you some quick five questions and, and then we're gonna let uh, leave this tonight with a piece of advice that you wanna leave with women. So let me see here. Let me see, we have some questions. And um, yay, so here we are, here we are, here we are. We give, you, give these men a round of applause, everybody. <laughs> this is so much fun, this is so much fun. So how this works is basically, I just need you guys to just uh, chime in and give us your answers. I don't know why I can't get Brother Michael uh, in the middle of the screen. He is just gonna sit to the side. He's just going, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yes, yay. All right, so these questions are just a, a real quick answer, whatever you think 
Uh, your answer is, we just want to know. And yes, Bernie joined us tonight for this particular session. All right, true or not, and this I asked earlier, but uh, let me just, uh, men don't care what you say, they look at what you do, true or not? True. True? True. All true? Okay, all right. Uh, who's gonna win the Super Bowl? Kansas City Chiefs. I say Tampa Bay. The only way I say Tampa Bay because it's Tom Brady. That's because mm -hmm. you know they want him to win. I concur. Okay, two Tampa Bays and one Kansas City, another Kansas a City. All right. All right. Dating app. Yes or no? Online dating. Sure. I've tried it. I wouldn't try it again. I don't think so. All no. right, so one sure, one I tried it, and one I don't think so. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, top pet peeve of, of uh, men when, uh, or things that women can do that can aggravate men. Top pet peeve. One or two. Nagging. <laughs> Nagging. Nagging is the main one I do. <laughs> So, <laughs> <laughs> nagging, okay, okay. All right, slow dance or not? Is slow dance still in style for men? Oh, yes. I, yes. I dance with my wife right we, now. Okay. <laughs> we, we, we used to call it slow dragon. Yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still in. Slow dance, man. Slow dance is in. Yes, and the women say yes and amen. All right. Best pickup line a man can give a woman. What's your best pickup line? You must be from Tennessee because you're the only team I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Next, who else? Give me what's your best pickup line? You must be tired because you're running through my mind all day. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. Okay. Did it hurt? You say it would hurt when you fell in heaven. <laughs> That's it. That is it. <laughs> oh my goodness, that was so funny. Okay, thank you guys for, for indulging me with that. Oh my goodness. All right, so as we get ready to leave on this evening, if um, we, get, we have one final question. And if you all have been blessed by these gentlemen, I'm going to ask you in a minute to share some love. But um, give us one piece of advice that you would want to leave with women. So uh, who would like to go first? One piece of advice that you would like to leave with women. I'll go first. Uh, what I would say is, to understand that you are fearfully and wonderfully made by God and who you are is who God is destined for you to be. Doesn't mean that you, you're not gonna grow. You are gonna grow, you're gonna evolve, but you have everything in you now to be what God has called you to be. And so whether it's your relationships, uh, your uh, walk with Christ, uh, your career, whatever aspect of life uh, it, you know, you're struggling in, uh, just know that God has already given you the tools that you need to be successful in that. Uh, don't try to be like other women. Don't try to be somebody else. Uh, you know, don't go to social media and Instagram and look at, you know, what society says is a beautiful woman. Understand that you are beautiful uh, the way that God made you. Uh, take that, that temple, that shell, and um, make the best of it. 
And most of all, be 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 prayerful and um, understand that uh, the way your grandmother did it in the 40s uh, isn't the way necessarily the way that, that you're going to get it done today. And so, um, you know, nothing wrong with tradition, uh, but work what worked for grandmother may not work for you in 2021. And that's OK. You know, principles stay the same. Characters stay the same. Uh, but methodologies change. And so understand that, you know, uh, if you're talking relationships, um, you know, embrace new methodologies and new ways of doing things. It's okay. You can do that and still be a godly woman at the same time. Thank you so much for that. All right. So which one of you gentlemen would like to go next? Uh, go ahead and go. Did All right, say Michael. Uh, well, I, I I like to say mainly uh women like uh to kind of piggyback off what Dr. Reverend Wesley said. You know uh about yourself. You know stuff and stuff and you know uh working on self, staying prayed up. And my thing is mainly do not give up on love. But y'all because it hasn't happened yet, that don't mean it's not gonna happen. It's coming. It's just in due time and in due season, it's going to happen. So I just say do not give up on love. And when you do fall in love, be an example for somebody else to give somebody else hope. That was awesome. That was awesome. Reverend Hargrove? All right. Words to you guys for the night would be to be, be the best version of yourself you can be. Be the best you that you can be. Understand your value. Uh, do not allow yourself to compare yourself with other people or other people's seasons and so forth. Be the best version, version of yourself you can be. So don't compare. Don't compete. And last but not least, don't complain. They often say in the church, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. So I tell you to do self-evaluation, work on yourself, and watch the rest uh, unfold. Amen. You all have been so much fun tonight. And so I know it's a little lag between us talking and, and the audience getting it. But audience, if you have been blessed by these gentlemen in any kind of way, I need you all to just show so much love, like put up so many hearts and let them know that you appreciate that they took out this time to help. And I always say, you know, ministry is more than the pulpit and in the church. This helps the Christian. We have to, we have to walk out this, this natural life. And look, this, this whole production, Let's Talk Live, is about godly counsel. And I'm telling you right now that if you're watching us and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, that the Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not maybe. No mites, that's whosoever, wheresoever, whensoever, in whatsoever state you find yourself. Jesus is near you, right in your mouth, and you can call on him at any time. You can reach out to any of us if you do just that, and we want to make sure that you get on a good start and a healthy start with your Christian journey. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I really appreciate you. This has been fantastic. I see all the love in the hearts that's coming. Thank you all so much for tuning in and sharing it. And if you haven't shared it, make sure you do. It's never about, you know, trying to get the numbers up only, but it's really about this is information that the body of Christ needs. So guys, thank you. Reverend Wesley Preston, Preston you always come through. I always put your name, look at your name messed up. You didn't even say anything. You are the most kind person <laughs> to me. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> But I do appreciate you always being um, just um, willing to come because you're so valuable to the broadcast. As so, Brother Lewis, you have been as well. You guys have been just great partners with it. And Dr. Hargrove, you came on and you did, you did us a, a great service sharing with us so openly and honestly. Thank you. And I know that we would love to have you back sometime as well. All right. Well, anything, any announcements you guys want to make before we get off? Anything you want to say? No, I just... Hey, it's it's uh, February uh, Love Month, so my uh, encouragement <coughs> to you, single women, is that between now and the 14th, 
if you're not booed up, you'll get booed up. So. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Reverend Preston is single too. Well, he's talking like that. You get your inbox all flooded talking like that. <laughs> oh, so they can get booed up for the night. I'm looking for a lifetime. Except for a lifetime. That's the kind of talk that we need to hear coming from brothers. So we appreciate that. And that's right. So we're going to be talking about love and relationships of all kinds uh, through the month of February. And so make sure you stay tuned. Come back next week at 8 o'clock. We're going to have another great round of discussion with some men of God. Then we're going to turn around and talk about what women want and have some real honest discussion about that as well. Any other final notes from you, gentlemen? I'll just no, God bless you. y'all. All right. All right. Well, we'll see you all next time. Have a good evening. Thank you all for the love and being in touch. God bless you.